Um, and I'm going live. I'm live. Hello. I'm live. Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. We are going to be drawing Ismail Cruz Cordova today from the Rings of Power series. And just before I was watching this, um, just before I was on here getting ready to stream, I was watching part of the new episode and I'm very excited and emotional. Um, and it's, it's going to be fun drawing together. So I, I hope I've got everything set up properly. I did, I did a sketch, uh, which you may have seen on YouTube, uh, a couple of days ago to get in the, the mindset and to, to just have fun drawing an awesome reference. And I was going to work on the same reference again today. And I had read on a post from Ismail that he made ink from flowers. And I was like, oh, he made ink from flowers and wanted to do calligraphy and was always creative. And it's been nice uh, reading some of some of his posts and just seeing the amazing success of the show. I think it's incredible. I'm super inspired by the series at the moment. And when I saw that he made ink from flowers, I thought I've got to draw him with ink from flowers. So since I, I love natural ink, um, all the, all the pictures up behind me, all the portraits are done in natural ink. I thought it would be super appropriate to draw a, a sylvan elf with ink made from plants. Um, so I'm going to show you my workspace, a little bit of a clutter at the moment. So here's my, here's the calligraphy pen drawing I did. And here's a reference I'll be working with today. I also put this up for you to see over here and a really nice quality um, and it looks like there may be not many people watching yet but if you're here I would love to put your name uh, to tell me where you are in the chat where you're watching from and if you're watching the replay then um, then let me know in the comments wh where you're watching from and if you're loving the Rings of Power series. I'll bring up myself again. Here I am, little me in the corner. Um, so yeah, I'd love to, to hear from anyone watching um, how you're enjoying the series, if you've watched it. And we're going to draw today. So this, yeah, this was super fun. I did a direct drawing with the calligraphy pen. And... This is the um, Herlitz calligraphy pen on nostalgia paper. And I went right into it with pen and you may have noticed if you checked out the Instagram post, there's a little bit of correction here. The likeness was a bit off. Um, so I'm going to start with a pencil today, which I don't always do, but I want to, um, yeah, just to feel comfortable, a bit nervous drawing live and would like to just get in here. I've just got to do something in the background before I start sketching. Um, I hope that everyone can see me fine. Um, I hope I've got my pencil. I've been sitting here for like an hour getting everything sorted and now just wondering where everything is. Um, yeah, and I'd also love to know where um, if you've you can put in the comments or in the chat what, what your experience with Lord of the Rings has been and the whole the whole Middle Earth kind of realm because I've um, yeah it's been with me since my childhood reading it and then the films um, it was super inspirational for me this is the paper I'll be working on today this is a um, a sketchbook Hanamula toned watercolor paper and since I'll be working, doing an ink wash and starting a drawing and then doing the ink wash on top, um, it'd be nice to use watercolor paper because the nostalgia paper, which I usually use, is a bit, um, it doesn't like to get super wet. It's really nice with ink, but these natural inks that I make are 
are quite wet. So um, I'm just going to get into drawing here. I've when when I'm doing the live live streams, I've got I've got so many windows open, and I've also got Zoom open. And Shannon, it's so nice to have you here from Bloomington in the good old chat. Um, maybe you're the only viewer at the moment, but that's nice. We'll we'll draw together, and other people can draw whenever they want to draw. Um, but if anyone is watching, if anyone is watching and you would like to get in the Zoom room and chat with me, um, then I've got it open and the link is below, and you can you can jump in there if you want to. If I if I notice you um, pop up in there, then I will I'll let you in. <laughs> and um, so once I've got this all put in the right place, I'll. Uh, get to drawing. So starting with, I've got a 6B graphite pencil here, a lovely reference, um, which was in a post that Ismail made today. And um, so we work from this one, it's got really awesome, clear light and shadow forms, and uh, a nice, nice perspective. I, I did have this other reference that I was going to do this one again, because I really loved the shadow shapes in it, but this one's super nice. So I'll hope that you can see my pencil marks. I think you can. And once we get into ink, um, it's all going to become a lot clearer. So you're, you're, in, you're in the in the chat, Shannon, in the Zoom. Cool, we could actually talk. It looks like you might be the only person here and then I have some company. Everyone else must just be watching it later. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Shannon just said it would look like I'm talking to myself in my YouTube video because Shannon, my dear friend, is in Zoom with me. Um, so I can hear Shannon, but you can't. So if uh, if we get really into deep conversation, as we often do, I'll, I'll be sure to try and remember to tell you what Shannon's saying. <laughs> or you could put it in the chat, Shannon. <laughs> so any, any highlights from our conversation can go in the chat. Cool. I am. Um, I posted posted the other drawing yesterday, and just before I got on here, I saw that Ismail posted it to his stories, shared it to his stories, so that was cool. Yeah, super nice. And I I wrote to him because I I did this like um, I did a stories post where I just cropped the the face, and and he shared that one too. And, um, and then I wrote to him and and said that I'm gonna I'm gonna draw him with floral ink. And he told me that when he was a kid, he made ink from flowers. So that was nice. Yeah, yeah, just like just like a quick response in the Instagram chat. But yeah, it was like, oh wow, this this amazing elf um, has has written to me on Instagram. That's nice. Oh, here comes Roseanne into Zoom. That's nice. We're going to have a, a cozy little hello, Roseanne. Welcome to June. To, to June. That's a totally different world and movie. Welcome to Zoom. Um, <laughs> hello, hello, Roseanne. Roseanne, I can now hear you on your computer. Oh, I can hear me on your computer. Um, and But you'll be able to hear me real time, real time now. Um, so that's nice. It's nice to have you with us. Um. <laughs> oh, awesome. The, uh, the zine class.
So Roxanne, uh, Roseanne, who just joined the, the Zoom meeting, uh, just finished my calligraphy pen portrait to class here. That was like, oh, cool, cool. Oh, that's so nice. So Roseanne's just holding up this zine that she made um, under my, my tutelage. Uh, oh, that's so cool to see. That looks great. Nice, nice to have you. Nice to have you with me here. Me too. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That big one of Robert, that's super nice. Roseanne, if you, if you turn down the volume on YouTube, you'll be able to hear me and then it won't come back through your speaker. That would be cool. And then we can, we can chat. Your, your zine looks, looks really great. It's nice, nice to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, how's this drawing going? Oh, okay. Well, you could, um, <laughs> or you could, or you could just go back to to YouTube if you want to draw along. That's all good. The um, the, the chat is is not buzzing on the YouTube chat. <laughs> um, not 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 yet. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. So Roseanne or Shannon, uh, are either of you into Middle Earth and uh, Lord of the Rings or the, the new series? Cool. Yeah, I've been um, happily watching. I've been watching with Kira as well. We watched, we actually watched Lord of the Rings together uh, when we lived in Australia, and um, Kira found it very difficult to watch because um, she's quite sensitive. So she's she's into the whole world, but but um, not not into the the orcs and the battle and and such things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm That's a thank you, Tolling. So Sh Sh Shannon has just re related the story that um, was it one of the Lord of the Rings films, maybe the first one, that um, Shannon's son was ten months old, sleeping in the cinema, and um, he woke up crying. So Shannon had an excuse to leave and um, get away from the orcs. <laughs> That's nice. Cool. I'm I'm Mhm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Galadriel is really cool. It's it's nice in the series now seeing, for those who are familiar with the 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 Lord of the Rings films, the um, it's kind of like part of the origin story, to see what happened before the story of, the Lord of the Rings, so Galadriel's uh, a younger Galadriel, commander of the Northern Armies, and it's it's really cool getting the backstory, and yeah, the whole thing about like the visual the, the beauty of the lord of the rings um i was just so inspired by all of the work all of the concept art and i was i was really obsessed back when i had time to really get super obsessed about things like that um the work of john howe and alan lee was just so inspiring it was actually part of what what set me on my um creative journey taking taking art seriously was uh Yeah. And I remember seeing videos of John Howe and Alan Lee sketching and all the behind the scenes stuff. Like I watched watched everything back in the day. And um and seeing them they're like they're drawing all the time and they're creating these worlds and it's just so um so inspiring to see how so so much visually of what happened in the films like came out of their pencil tips and that they and they and they're so chilled. They're just sitting there sketching and these crazy Yeah. Yeah, and they just seem. Oh, it, it was it was magic watching them draw. And back then, I remember because I I liked drawing, but never really took it seriously. Um, just had like a a travel sketchbook, and and seeing John Howe and Alan Lee doing that, I was like, that's amazing. I'd love to do that, but I have no idea how to even learn how to draw. Really, <laughs> like, how is it even possible to get so good? And um, Kira thankfully gave me the nudge, and she was like, "Oh well, if you know, if you like it so much, how about you, how about you get better and find out how to get better?" Um, so big thanks to Kira for supporting me on my artistic journey. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's thanks to Kira that we are here sitting together um, on YouTube and in my Zoom room. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I think they're mostly in bed. I can maybe reading reading now. Um no, he's probably he's probably reading Pokemon. Cool. I'm just checking it's interesting now to see my drawing compared to what's up on the screen because I can kind of see it differently than I do looking on my work surface, I think maybe the head's a bit high. Like I can start to to recognize some kind of um, deviation from the reference, and um, a lot of it I just kind of roll with, and I just kind of like I go with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if I can catch some things before I start inking, like the head just seemed a bit too high. So for those. Uh, joining here hello nice to have you sketching or watching um so far this is not much of an instructional drawing video it's just like some um middle earth appreciation um but yeah i started drawing with a pencil before i get into ink so that i can kind of keep an eye out for any any big kind of mistakes uh, catch anything before I really commit to the ink but I'm really looking forward to inking it and the way I kind of setting up the shapes here it's a bit different than like with the calligraphy pen drawings like this one um, like I will draw these shadow areas and I know I'm gonna come in with the the ink wash which won't be super dark like the black ink but I'll be able to come in and, and fill in shadow spaces um, with a, a kind of subtle ink wash. So that'll be cool. Slightly different process to the calligraphy pen drawings I do a lot of. 
and um, it's cool to to get my my natural ink out again. I was looking. I haven't used much natural ink in the past year, and I was going through some of my jars, and Holly was sitting here with me, and I don't know what it was, but I opened a jar of something that's been sitting there for so long. I was like, oh, I don't think I can use this anymore. It stinks. <laughs> Unfortunately, didn't smell like cloves, so maybe I forgot to uh, put cloves in that jar. Yeah. So. So Shannon in the chat just says <laughs> that she's been liking the screen check after drawing on a flat surface. Is that during your, um, Shannon has been putting up videos on YouTube recently, some really cool sketches. Be sure to go check them out. Um, and yeah, the thing of like when you're drawing, if you then, if you have a different way to see the drawing, you often like get a new perspective and it can be like, oh, that's maybe I'll change that. Um, like when you're just focused and in the middle of a sketch, there can be some things that you don't really notice. But yeah, if you take a photo with your phone and then you see it like in a reduced size, or if you look at it with a mirror, um, then you kind of see it from a different perspective. And sometimes some things will jump out at you that maybe want some attention. Like if the whole head is skewed over to one side and you didn't notice because you were in the zone drawing and um, yeah, it can be helpful to check in and get a new perspective. Um, thank you. <laughs> a little, um, little, little encouragement from Zoom. Thank you very much, Shannon. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Mira. Um, and with this, with this ink watch, wash approach, uh, I often like I'll um, try and try and get as much of the drawing figures out as I can, which is so different to often calligraphy pen. I'll just kind of work my way throughout the face. Um, but now it's like I want to spend some time getting the drawing uh, to a state where I like it because starting to put the ink wash down on top of the drawing kind of locks it all in place. There's still a little bit of possibility for some variation, but um, <laughs> good light, light up that chat. Anyone have any questions? Anyone watching want to say in the chat where they're watching from <laughs> and if they are Lord of the Rings fans? Anyone other than Shannon, I very much appreciate Shannon being up in the chat. But I see there are seven, seven people watching and only Shannon's in the chat. <laughs> and you can give me a thumbs up too. <laughs> All right, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, on, um, on Instagram Live and TikTok, you can do multiple love hearts. YouTube only lets you thumbs up once. Mm -hmm. um, that is a very interesting question. Thank you, Shannon, in the chat. <laughs> um, ca can you work into the flower ink with water after it's dry like you can with watercolor? It's very different to watercolor. So like once you put it down, depending on how you've made the ink and what kind of binder or the paper, there are a lot of variables. But once it's down, it doesn't tend to be as um, uh, it's mutable, the right word. <laughs> like you can't change it as much. You can put down water and lift a bit. But once the ink washes down, it behaves differently than watercolor. 
watercolor still there's so much kind of play and moving you can do but once the ink washes down especially once it dries part of what i love about it is the kind of um the blooms and the the cool shapes uh, and edges that you get and if you if you work into that with water it's not um in my experience it's not so cool so that's what i like i think that's the main difference about the natural ink compared to watercolor like the ink wash process do i have something here apart from in the background um here's something uh this is with avocado ink and and these kind of like really clear defined edges to those ink shapes is something that I like a lot. And it's, um, it's really similar to working with watercolor being such a water medium, but it's not as changeable as watercolor. So I like the thing of like, once you've, you've made your decision and you make the mark and you just kind of leave it there. Um, while it's still wet, you can lift it off if you put too much down, but, um, that's that's kind of the main way in which it varies to to watercolor um parsons from cornwall awesome and you also like lord of the rings welcome to this uh lord of the rings appreciation session garda gabi from buenos aires oh awesome nice having you with us um Um, anyone in the chat can we're just wondering what Galadriel's mirror was about. There's actually a Zoom room open. If you would like to come and chat with us live, there's a Zoom link in the description below this video. And um, you can sit and draw with Shannon, Roseanne and myself in Zoom. Um, Gada Gabi, how do natural tints inks age? Do they change too much? It varies greatly. All of the they're out of focus, but all of the pieces on the wall behind me, they're all natural ink. They are all unprotected from UV light and they're all doing pretty good. I have, there are some inks which will change within hours. You can see the colors working and changing. Um, some of the botanical inks are really fugitive. They, they escape and run away. They really change color. Some will change color depending on the paper you're working on too. Um, but the, I can't, sh I can't show you them really awesomely right now because they're all out of focus. <laughs> um, but a lot of the inks, the really nice dark inks are tannin and iron based and they, in my experience, they're really nicely light fast. It's a beautiful dark sepia color. And, um, I have pieces which I did. must be about six years ago now, which still look as good as the day that I, I drew, painted them. So the acorn ink is really, really good. Um, but some of the other botanical inks uh, change quite a lot. And sometimes, sometimes they will keep the value structure so it still looks good as a complete image, but sometimes they become something totally different. <laughs> I'll I'll make a I'll make a YouTube video sometime where I talk about the aging process of natural inks. I think that'd be really interesting for me as well to look back. Sometimes I flip through some old pieces that I've done. I'm like, wow, that looks so different now. Um, I'm starting to feel. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. I uh, Thank you, Shannon. Uh, the voice in my head. <laughs> um, for those watching on YouTube, you can't hear the awesome comments that Shannon's saying in Zoom. If you want to, follow the Zoom link in my bio. Um, I do have, I think it's at the bottom of my link tree in on Instagram. There is... <laughs> this Mel Cruz Cordova is in the chat. It's so nice um, having you tune in. And 
so awesome. I just before I got on here, I was watching the most recent episode, and it was I was so emotional. Um, so it's really exciting warm up getting in here. It's it's so cool having you here. It's it's amazing. I'm I'm just loving loving your work, loving the series, and thank you for for dropping by and saying hello to our, our cozy little um, live stream here. Awesome. That yeah, so cool. Um, I still have twenty minutes left of the latest episode, and I'm going to watch it once I finish drawing you. Um, it's ah, oh, I love it. Missed the chat so far, but the whole Lord of the Rings world has so, so um, been so inspiring for me, and it actually is part of what got me on my creative artistic journey. Um, and so I'm really appreciating the the new dive into Middle Earth. And it's, I think the, I don't want to get into any spoilers here, just a general appreciation. Um, but I, I appreciate a lot of the, the kind of, um, the themes that are being addressed. So interesting. It's so interesting now, like, um, at a, I guess the world and myself in a different stage than um, back then and kind of looking at, at this fantasy world with a new kind of appreciation for the way things connect into the real world and um, yeah so interesting uh, the way a lot of like hard, hard topics are addressed so yeah a lot of appreciation Oh, cool. Yeah, Ismail just um, said it in, in the chat. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. You're doing this, my guy. I just wanted to drop by real quick and show some love. So much love to you. Thank you. Got to get in my way. I, I can imagine. I can imagine you have a lot of things to do. <laughs> um, yeah, look forward to seeing the final image. I can't wait to share it with you. And thank you so much for sharing for sharing this one. Um, just before I got on here, I saw that you had posted it in your stories. Thank, thanks a lot. And keep up the awesome work. I can't wait to see all of your your future endeavors as well. Thank you so much for dropping by. That is it's the best. <laughs> so cool. Thank you. <laughs> it was um, if you're still here, like when when you reshared the message, um, the story that I did, I was like, oh. Um, my wife and I have been watching together and she was like, what is it? I was looking at my phone and I was like, oh, um, Aaron dear just wrote to me. <laughs> it was so cool. So it's it's so nice. I've see, seen your lives on Instagram as well and it's so nice that you're, that you're just the whole, this kind of technological age that we're in and the directness of communication and just how um, it's, it's so much more like, I don't know, what am I trying to say? The way that we are interwoven and can be connected um, to age age of connection and communication, I guess. So cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, all right, I think I'm going to be brave. I notice I haven't really been changing anything in my drawing. I'm just kind of like hesitating a bit, but I'm about to get into to ink. <sighs> and I've got this jar of poppy petal ink. I have a, a YouTube video. Uh, where I teach you how to make this poppy petal ink. It has aged somewhat. It was a really vibrant kind of red wine color when when I first made it. And now it's like a darker brown red, which is still really nice. Um, but when it's when it's fresh, it's really vibrant and um, yeah, it. Uh, that ties in really well with the question of how do they fade and age because this one I think once it's on the paper it, it retains its color better but because this um, ink in the jar is now a few months old it, it has a, a darker like a brown hue so the um, the shadow shapes that I set up over here I'm just gonna fill in all of the shadow shapes so that's but like oh wow cool so Shannon who's on the YouTube chat and also in my zoom room um, 
has a portrait of her son that I painted for her. And it said that it has turned into a much more purple color than it originally was. Because I had this, you can check that out if you, see, you look at my um, Poppy Petal Ink video. Um, towards the end of it, there's a time lapse of the portrait of Tolling. Um, April? No, in the video I said it's a beautiful May day. Yeah, it's on the landing page of my YouTube with my beautiful assistant, Holly. So every time I, yeah, oh, it was so nice doing it with her, going out. Um, hang on, I'm just seeing over on the side here. Oh, cool. Um, Ismail just shared the uh, the link to this live stream and his stories, so so cool. <laughs> I've been blessed by Sylvan Elf. I also um, our second son's middle name is Sylvan. Uh, the the Sylvan Elves are the Wood Elves, and so Sylvan is like of the forest. Um, so I also love that Arondia is a Sylvan Elf, and the the wooden armor, the whole, the whole aesthetic, and the way Ismail is portraying this character. I just I just love it. So cool. Uh, Garda Gabi, thank you for asking if I seal ink work. Um, I don't. Uh, I have heard some people, uh, some of my inks have gum arabic in them. Some have cherry sap as a binder, not all of them. And I haven't tried it myself, but some other natural ink people have um, suggested if you do like a thin layer, like a thin wash of um, pure gum arabic, not mix them with any ink, that that is like an extra seal. But all of the um, all of the work I've done so far, I have not done any additional kind of sealing, sealing fixative to them. And part of the part of the reason I got into um, making natural inks was that I wanted to I wanted to work with materials that are um, safe for me and safe for the environment and safe for the children in my house. Um, so then I was like, oh, I don't, I don't think I can spray fixative on it. <laughs> um, I, I haven't used fixative on, on any of my, my natural ink work. Part of the, um, the beauty and um, part of what I enjoy about natural ink is its impermanence as well and the way it transforms that the ink as a medium has a life of its own. That once I've finished um, working on a piece, it's not finished yet because the ink also um, is also working. Uh, thank you so much, Gada Gabi. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying it. It's nice to have you here in the chat. Anyone else who's watching, feel free to uh, to get into the chat and say hello. It's always nice to to connect. Excellent. Oh, yes, walnut ink season is coming. Thanks so much for joining, Paston. Um, Paston, uh, now you can, if you've done any drawing, uh, or anyone who's watching this, if if you're drawing along feel free to tag me at dylan underscore sarah on instagram i'm also dylan sarah draws on tiktok um or if you're sharing stuff here wherever uh you can use the hashtag drawing with dylan as well because i would love to see any work that anyone's doing along with me so thanks so much for joining um this is a cool watercolor paper because it's toned so it's nice. It's the uh, the highlights are not going to be white white. 
um, it has this really nice warm warm white color um, and I'm I have some walnut ink and it's walnuts ink season um, I have some walnut ink over here I'm gonna fill in the background with some of this walnut ink which is gonna really set the contrast of the face a lot um, fortunately this walnut ink is smellable it's it can be one of the worst smelling inks that I've made walnut ink it can get really bad but this one's this one's good so here's my big old jar of walnut ink this was a jar of um, pickles gherkins um, it's so cool making natural ink um, because the the materials especially like walnuts and acorns poppy petals they're just such an abundance um, so you can make so much of it and really and there's still so much so the walnut ink is made from walnut husks um, which is like the green fruit around the shell of the nut and so you use it's generally something which uh, just kind of returns to the earth that um, there's not like a use for it so you can you can collect walnuts keep the nuts to eat and you can use the husks to make this really nice dark brown ink <laughs> yeah it's it's cool it's cool having you and, and Roseanne that sh I'm talking to Shannon I'm not talking to a voice in my head in case you're watching on YouTube um, I have a zoom room open if you would like to everyone's welcome to pop in and join zoom um, this is actually my my live sketch session which I do every Tuesday I use this link which is in the description below and recently during live streams I've had the zoom room open too and it's it's really nice even though it's not like a super conversational space um just to to look up and see people drawing alongside me um the focus of drawing and drawing together it's really nice so thanks Rosanna Shannon for being here ah Laura cool Laura's a a regular from our Tuesday sessions. Nice to have you in the chat, Laura. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe YouTube will be more like Zoom in the future. Oh, I looked up, I saw this comment. It's a very good comment. Um, cause I, I've noticed when I, when I do live dreams, live dreams, oh, um, live streams, I, I started in 2020. I did a lot on the, um, sketchy YouTube channel. Actually tomorrow, the 2nd of October, I did my first live stream on my channel last year. So this is like, thank you. Happy anniversary for my, my YouTube live streams. Um, yeah, Gata Gabi. Uh, I, I have a whole class about ink making and portraiture. But just today I was also thinking, so you can check that out. I also put the link in the description to that. Um, but there would definitely be a YouTube video coming about walnut ink. Just today I was thinking, there are walnuts everywhere. I've got to make a new YouTube video. Because um, the poppy ink one is a bit out of season now. Um, but I will be making a couple of videos about walnut ink and acorn ink, but it's actually really easy. <laughs> it's, it's worth making a video about, but it's really easy. Um, the fruit outside the, the shell of the nut, it has this green husk, which turns super dark brown and you just collect those and put them in water. Um, you can cook them. 
it's good to if if you know about preserving food at all like sterilizing things is a good idea because um if you want to keep it for a long time it can get pretty stinky um you can also actually add some uh, like rub, rubbing alcohol to walnut ink and that will prevent it from um doing what it does and also adding cloves or clove oil is um, a really good way to preserve it um but that's, that's basically it i will make a tutorial video about it but just do that <laughs> cook some walnut husks and then um if it's if it's too watery uh then just cook it a bit longer and it'll get darker and darker and darker and i have made some which is like thick super thick um so yeah definitely try it out it's it's so much fun making natural ink um accessing the abundance of nature and incorporating it into our artwork is something i love a lot uh, i have i made some i don't know if you can see this yeah yeah you can see how green that is this is a cup of stinging nettle tea and i let it steep all day and um it's not going to be very dark because it's actually tea i can still drink it once i put my paintbrush in it i won't drink it um but i was thinking for the the wood of the armor down here it has like this gray color and i was thinking i'll use some of this um but i think it's really it's not going to be very dark oh and there's like red ink in there so I maybe clean the brush first oh it's so nice isn't it Shannon just had the walnut ink looks beautiful I I love this color this was the, actually the first ever ink I made and I made it as a timber stain for um for wood for um All right, I, there's a good, good question up in the, the chat there. I'll just read that out. Is the most important theme in Lord of the Rings the reverse quest or death and immortality? Ah. Um, I'll have to ponder on that a bit. Uh, anyone in the chat, feel free to get in on that conversation. <laughs> um, Um, you can use walnut husk dried or fresh and as they decay we can get back to that death and immortality theme um, as they start to decompose so they're really green and when they're fresh and then if you cook them they'll turn brown if you just leave them they'll dry and shrivel up I actually have like I have heaps of them they just I just can't get at them right now um, or can I I've got all sorts of like nat nature art supplies. Here we go. Um, oh, I'll hold it over here. This is a walnut from last year. And so you can see the husk is this really amazing dark brown color. And so you can use them dried. You can use them a year old and dry. So you can cook up some, make some ink and Rosanna, I just see this cat's tail up in your video feed on Zoom. That's awesome. <laughs> um, so the the walnut husk, you can use it fresh. You can just collect it and then cook it. Um, but it's really awesome to keep some dry. And then whenever you need a fresh batch of ink, you can make some ink. <sighs> now I have walnut crumbs on my drawing. Oh, Roseanne gathered some acorn caps. Excellent acorn ink is so good um collect some rusty stuff as well uh, i'll be making another video about that it's a bit more involved than walnut husk but i have this is a little aside um this is my rust stuff uh vinegar and rust and if you you add this to your acorn cap ink it'll get super dark because the the iron reacts to tannin and makes it nice and dark and also um makes it more light fast as well I think so a little little aside the hero Frodo instead of pursuing tre treasure is in a quest 
to destroy treasure. Mm. Yeah, but the treasure corrupts, right? That's um. So it's like this this thing of de ev that everyone desires this treasure, but it's um that it's be becoming corrupted by it is inevitable, so it needs to be destroyed. This is not any big spoiler stuff. Like it's Lord of the Rings, it's about this the ring, the One Ring, um, which is super interesting because it kind of it weaves through this this influence of corrupting this corrupting power. It's so interesting, like that the, you know, it's, it's fantasy, but there's so much deep stuff that it touches upon. Um, so it's really interesting to uh, get into, like unpack those meanings and kind of see them as a, how they influence our, our normal, normal life and world as well. Um, Gada Gabi, when you make some walnut ink, I would love you to tag me, especially if you're on Instagram, which I use the most. Um, I'd love to see what, what you make. Uh, so yeah, tag me. It's it's so nice, isn't it? Um, all right, I was just wondering, what, what was I about to do? I was going to clean this brush and, um, and put some nettle onto the armor. It's not the treasure's fault. Is it not the treasure's fault? Um, well, well, that's that's the thing. But the the treasure was forged. If if you get what I'm enjoying about the the rings of power, it's a bit like a Horcrux, I think. Like, um, yeah. So, oh, look at this. Can you see that? Like this subtle green color. Oh, that's nice. Um, so the the Silmarillion is like it covers it spans the history of Middle Earth leading up to the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings, and also um, encompasses the creation myth of the world, which is really interesting. And it's it all starts with vibration and singing, and. Um, the creator sings a tune that all of the angels sing in harmony with and then one of them is kind of like i'm going to sing my own dissonant song sound and then it kind of confuses the surrounding beings of light and they're like should i sing the main tune or should i sing along with this and that corrupting dissonant influence is morgoth um, melkor who is like the the big baddie um who is also part of the one. So a lot like Lucifer, like one of the angels that then had its own idea. And then um, Sauron, who forged the ring, is like uh, second in command to the, the Melkor. And um, in forging the ring, pours its own power um, puts their own power into this ring so it has this dissonant quality to it so even though people possess it and want to do good with it it is imbued with a dissonance to um creation so that's my little summary of the treasure the treasure is not um impartial it is um it's part of the dissonant force of the world I'm going to do something now. I have this little jar. This has acorn ink in it, which is really dark. And it's actually a mix of acorn and avocado ink. The acorn ink is really um, like dark brown and the avocado is a warm red color, quite similar to this walnut actually. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some some of the details, some of the li line work with this dip pen and this acorn ink. Before I do that, because it's, I may just blast this with a hairdryer because it's 
quite wet around here and I can see it's like warping the paper and it's kind of hard to see because of the light. So excuse the sound of my hairdryer here. I usually enjoy just letting things dry when they have their own kind of natural dispersion but for the sake of a live stream I just accelerate the process a bit. Back in the day I would like do, an, uh, do a wash, let the whole thing dry, come back, keep working on it. But now I just want it dry so I can keep going. Um, so I'm going to go into some of the just establish some contrast, get some detail. It can it can be very hazardous working into the ink wash with uh, with a like more saturated darker ink if it's not really dry. You can see here it's already starting to like bleed out. Um, so if you're if you're doing like a, a wet and wet, it can be um, do it at your own risk uh, because I've had a, a lot of a lot of pieces where things just start to blur in a, a way that I was not intending and not entirely happy with. Good question. How thick is the paper? Thank you for asking, Gata Gavi. I thank you for bringing it to my attention, Shannon. Um, where's that little... Ha, ah, there it is. Here is the... Uh, so it's it's 200 grams a square meter or 95 pounds, this paper. It's a Hanamula toned watercolor book. That's how thick it is. So it warps a bit and um, there's another Hanamula paper which is like tw more than twice the paper weight of this one, which I really enjoy working with. Um, but this is a nice format and I really like this toned watercolor paper. <laughs> Thank you for asking. It's, uh, it's, it's great. I, I'm, I'm here to answer questions and I love having questions to answer. Yeah. yeah, and I'm, I'm happy to, to, to talk more about um, Middle Earth and the Tolkien, Tolkien world. Kira, actually, when we lived in Australia and um, we went through it all together, Kira taught a main lesson at a Wardorf school about sagas and covered a lot of different sagas from different um, eras and cultures and had the main, main focus on the work of Tolkien and the, the kind of the universal um, themes and narrative uh, and the different kind of archetypal explorations within the, the story. Yeah, really cool. So she had a bunch of um, teenagers all all, all apart from one, she told me yesterday that there was this one kid who did a really good job of going through the material and doing what they were supposed to do, but was not really into it. But all the other kids were like, I think, really getting into it. And a really interesting thing, um, I think it's it's interesting in these in the Tolkien world and also in um, in other other stories, fantasy, sci-fi, other fiction, and I feel like it's particularly relevant now um, for me living in Europe. And um, there's there's now war in Europe, and we have like there are um, 
refugees living in our village and going to school with our kids and um and the way these fictional stories deal with the um this idea of war because it's there's a lot of a lot of battle in there the good versus evil stuff um and it's really interesting i think because it's like how how can it be really clear cut like it's very difficult to say um in a nuanced way like you can't really say those people are just totally bad and that's totally wrong um and that's been something interesting that's like well well i guess it's it's picking up on that creation myth um and the, the idea of like it's, it's a lot like lucifer and the idea of oh, why does evil exist in the world um and to see it kind of ex what was that shannon no no hmm Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Shannon was just wondering in, in Zoom, uh, musing on where the, uh, the Lucifer story comes from, because it's not actually, what did you say, not canonical? Um, it's not in the Hebrew Bible. All right, we're not experts here. <laughs> Maybe someone else knows. Feel free to, to 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 tune in, chime in in the chat or in the comments if you're watching this after the live. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've seen something really interesting. Um, oh, there's 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 a lot there's a lot kind of buzzing. There's there's just so much going on. Uh, in in the genre and in the world um because the, the idea of race in in lord of rings like there the, there are these clearly different races um one the the dwarves and elves and humans and then the orcs um and i've seen it done i, th I think to terrible and um effect like it's so effective in the the idea of creating monsters of the enemy um to dehumanize and and that's the thing in lord of the rings because they're not all humans and those are clearly those are orcs like um and they they are like the product of the dissonance and corruption of the initial harmony um that's a really interesting it's it's nice to see that that is also being addressed in the rings of power series which is it hasn't been in the past that um i won't get into it too much but in the i think it was like the third episode there's I get to see a different side of the orcs they're still obviously the enemy but um a kind of yeah i don't know i, I don't want to get too much into it because um hello stationary obsessive <laughs> uh because people should just be able to watch it. But um, the idea of there being then nuance in that is, is interesting. How long have we been going for? This has already been an hour. Um, all right. Mm. Yeah, the armor is really nice. It's. Um, the green man exactly which is interesting seeing that in the um the the style the look of the this world when i lived in in england i went to a a, a green man Kind of festival in Hastings, Jack in the Green, marching through Hastings, and people were wearing green and making music and dancing and a celebration of life and growth. <laughs> oh yeah, 
uh, so there's, oh, I don't know if I, if I can sort it all out of my head. Shannon just asked Zoom if there's a Mrs. Green Man, um, of course. But um, so they were like, there are these two kings and it's to do with the, the cycle of the year. And then there's also these, like, and it's to do with particular plants as well. And there are um, also the feminine aspects and um, different plants. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. I, I've seen all this stuff and we've got some interesting books where it's got these different um, like sacred plants and uh, the festivals of the year, like Celtic festivals and stuff. Um, pretty cool. I'm gonna get my brush into this ink. I feel like I'm working very slowly, but I'm having fun talking. Thank you for being in Zoom and talking with me, Shannon. <laughs> So Matthew, uh, Lucifer is from the Latin Vulgate, Vulgate, translated as light bringer from the Greek Septuagint. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say that. Septuagint. Mm. Ah. In Isaiah, okay, in Isaiah in the Hebrew Bible. Um, some background information in, in the Zoom chat. Um, So these are all um, all of the inks that I'm working with are pretty pretty warm, a lot of, lot of reddish in here. You can get acorn ink really black, but I mix this the, this ink with avocado, so it's quite a, a warm red brown. I think I need a bigger brush. Um, that was walnut. Oh yeah, fill up the chat with random knowledge and uh, and wisdom. So just grab this bigger brush, feeling the urge to um, be a bit bolder with what I'm doing. Also, not to make this like a, a three hour portrait. <laughs> um, it's good to use a big tool to, to speed things up a bit. And I really like uh, flat brushes. Nice. I like these um, rectangular shapes and the stylization that it kind of lends itself to. And, and Roseanne's here. And Roseanne's cat was here in the Zoom as well.
Mm-hmm. All right, so the, the question is what, um, <laughs> just, just uh, referencing Gadagabi saying, going to be boiling everything after this walnut husk avocado pits acorns. I have a video on my YouTube channel about avocado ink. Check that out. Um, acorns, onion skins. Yeah, it's so good. Um, do it, do it. I'd love to see your results. It's that those initial, that first encounter with like getting into natural ink making such a, like a wonderful experience, just um, starting to move through the world being like, I wonder if I can make ink with that. I wonder if I can use that. I wonder if I can use that. Um, It's so cool. So I, I um, encourage you to experiment, make ink with everything. Um, So in Zoom, Shannon was just asking what what is Galadriel's mirror about? What happens exactly again? Like Frodo looks into the mirror and sees Could you fill me in with that again? I'm, I'm drawing a bit of a blank on that. Is it, or anyone else in the chat wants to tell us what happens with Galadriel's mirror? Because it's this visionary reflection. <laughs> That's a Harry Potter reference. I'm I'm going to um try this a bit. I'm feeling the desire to do some more line work to really clearly see what I'm doing here. Um, I bought a lot, bought a lot of this brown tone in, but I want to in- intensify. When I'm doing these ink washes, I often have this, um, it's like this back and forward or the push and pull. I hear a lot of artists talking about push and pulling their painting. Um, it's like you start with the drawing and then start filling in some values and then it's like you're losing part of the the contrast and and strength of the initial drawing and then um, try and return to what it was in the initial drawing that was cool and kind of dancing between I really like drawing I draw a lot um, so it's uh, just coming back and redrawing after doing some painting. Especially with this ink, like doing working from a nib, uh, the it's always like the intensity of the ink is always um, greater when working from a nib rather than from a brush. Yeah, so cool. His pointy elven ears. So I, I've been seeing like nearly every day, Ismail was posting something on Instagram and um, keep looking for pointy ears, but it's like in the real world photos, uh, not so much pointy ears. So 
the eyes are way too bright. I was wondering if I should use a different color, but I'm just going to, this is going to be pretty monotone. So I'll just like the contrast of that pupil is just like way too high. So that instantly makes me feel better. <laughs> just uh, getting the contrast down on that iris. Um, using using chalk, it's uh, then you would need some kind of fixative, but you could create like um, you could grind chalk or a white stone and then use a binder um, and then create like a like a white paint for for highlights. Yeah, there are a lot of. Um, I have not, I've actually, I've collected some white stones from, from the Baltic Sea, thinking that I would make a white, white paint, but I, I haven't got around to it. I've collected a lot of stones thinking I would make earth pigment from them, but I don't know. I, milk as a fixative, yeah, it's, um, is it, what's it called? Casein paint, what's this? Or egg. Egg tempera. Use. I've I've never tried it, but that's um a pretty classic way of using natural pigment and natural binder. Which some people can even source from their own garden, the eggs. <laughs> So I'm starting to, um, part of what I like about uh, these ink wash pieces is the layering and building up um, in intensity, which is very different to like the, the pure black ink, where it's like, as soon as you've made your mark, the intensity is there. So this subtle layering up, um, it's more involved, but it's, I think it's a really enjoyable process. So Gadagabi, if you're in Buenos Aires, you must have access to really different plants than than I do in Germany, I imagine. I'm sure there's really awesome pigment plants over there. I think with the natural inks, it's um, such an interesting, like it's this new way to look at, at the world and the colors that we can source around us and also to um, to travel like to create something a color in a place where you are and to work with it create something with it and and then if you move on um, or takes take some of that color with you to to have like the story of the place it becomes like this extra like invisible layer to the work that you create. Yeah, and I, I really like that element of um, like the story of the place becoming part of the materials um, and then whatever you create with it. 
like I've told this story a few times, but I made a, in a few live streams, I think. <laughs> but we, when Kira was pregnant with Holly, our third child, we spent one warm autumn afternoon. Um, I was collecting acorns with Aiken and Arvid. And I totally clearly remember Kira sitting on this tree stump in the in the, the autumn sun, collecting these um, acorns together and then making ink with the kids with it. And, and that, that, that story of that autumn day and of that place that we used to live became part of the story of the, the ink. And even though whatever, then I, whatever portraits I painted with it, although it's not apparent in that portrait, it's, um, for me, it's like this, uh, has another layer of story. And I think it's nice that it offers this uh, like additional way to connect to the work that we create by having this uh, intimate knowledge of the materials that we're using. Yeah, landscapes painted with the landscape, says Shannon. <laughs> So I had this idea, I have lots of ideas. I still think this one's pretty good, but I haven't got around to it yet, of doing a series of portraits. Um, and I actually got in touch with, with a few people already who are pigment workers, people who create color from around the globe uh, to, well, initially, the initial idea was like to paint people with pigment from the place where they are from, from their land, from their country, and to have a portrait of them and maybe with like an aerial view of like the land as, as the background. Um, and then I was like, but who would I paint? And then I thought it'd be interesting to get in touch with people who um, create pigment and work with their own the, the pigment that they source in their surroundings. So ra rather than having to fly around the world, meeting all of these people, um, they could send me like a little packet of pigment and I could do their portrait. That may still happen someday. Yeah, something from their yard or from the, the land around them. Or there are some places where there's a particular stone. Like here, there's this really, really lovely sandstone, which is very prevalent in the, the area where I live. Um, a lot of old houses uh, have sandstone incorporated into it, and that's a really distinctive color. And so it's really. I know some other places where sandstone is quite yellow and here it has this like red purple color. Um, so I could start in my own village, I guess. I can collect pigment from here and start doing portraits of people from here. Goldsworthy. No? Oh, Ian Goldsmith. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about Andy Goldsworthy, totally different artist. I was just thinking about um, land art, but Ian Goldsmith, he's the the color, the student of color. Um, it's so cool. Yeah, he sent me a link to someone. Um, everyone go check out Ian Goldsmith if you're interested, curious about color. Um, Tell me about someone who's um, like, I think taking pollution, like cleaning waterways and stuff. And with this like pollution sludge making 
paint out of it, which is an interesting idea. And there are a lot of people, well, there are some people <laughs> who are, have really cool projects um, uh, making their pigment creation and pigment use uh, um, activism, like a rural pen who's dissolving guns and turning them into ink. The One Ring. <laughs> yeah, so uh, tied this back into um, Middle Earth. Shannon would like ink made from the dissolved metal of the One Ring. <laughs> I, I wonder what kind of power it would have as a, a pigment. I don't know if it was only if it was only a portion of the One Ring, because the uh, yeah I don't know. That's the thing, like people who had the One Ring could do great things with it. And that's the thing in the story that there's also um, people whose originally their intentions are good and they try and do good things with the power, but they end up being corrupted by it. But if you dissolved it and then made pigment, so you only have a little portion of it, then maybe, I don't know, it'd only be a little bit corrupted by the... <laughs> yeah. It, it, it wouldn't lead to ultimate corruption, just a bit. Yeah, so so it'd be right. Yeah, that that's an interesting interesting kind of um, kind of theme in the story, like having good intentions but using a an evil tool to try and achieve your goals. Is that is that going to work out? So I'm feeling pretty good about this um, wood elf, Arondir, the sylvan elf, drawn with plant pigment. I think it's a, it's been a, a nice thing to do. Very fitting. Thanks for your undying encouragement and support, Shannon. <laughs> Uh, chat Shannon's, Shannon is my my cheer squad on Zoom. So for f <laughs> for future reference, anyone watching this after the live, um, sometimes I have my Zoom room open, and you can come into the Zoom room, and we can like chat. So you're like watching this, drawing along, you can put something in the chat, but you can also follow the link in the description below, and it'd be almost like we're sitting together at my my messy desk. <laughs> And whatever your desk is. And Roseanne is also working in the Zoom room. So cool. How are you going, Roseanne? You still working on Arundia? It's it's nice sitting and drawing together. This is so different than the live sessions on Tuesday because when you oh cool cool just having a look at Roseanne's drawing definitely worked with that the technique from the calligraphy pen class awesome what's what's the brown ink that you have or, or is it a watercolor or something oh I can't hear you at the moment walnut oh cool Awesome. So Rosanne's working with Walnut too. Oh yeah. Walnut ink is really good. Cool.
supporting. Yeah, honesty is great. It's good to have people that can be honest. Honesty is the best policy, right? Hmm? So when, when the ring is melted in Mordor, I don't know, has anyone here, anyone watching this not know the story? It's just like the, the, uh, a, a big spoiler. I, I hope everyone's familiar with Lord of the Rings. Um, but this is not the, not the current story, so hopefully most people are up to date with it. I don't know. So, yeah, it's it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Apart from the one ring. Just notice there's this highlight that I had down here next to the lip, which is like way too bright. It's always a good idea to squint at some stage to be like, what values are, are off? It's, it's interesting taking so much time on a piece. For those who don't know, every Tuesday you can come and draw with me and we sketch between 30 seconds and six minute portraits. And that's most of the portraits I've probably ever done because we do so much. In one session, it's like 26 portraits or something. Um, and I have had phases of my life where I've spent weeks, months on paintings. But in recent years, as a father of three young children, I am um, taking so long to do one piece has not been my priority. But now, like, um, I, I, I had a phase where I, I did a lot of um, these acorn ink portraits of, of yoga teachers. And, um, and they, each one of them was like a four hour portrait where I'd really like build it up. If you go far enough down my Instagram feed, um, you'll find them. I also, uh, I posted a couple of one minute time lapses on my YouTube a few weeks ago because I thought oh, I can share those um, time lapses here on YouTube and perhaps someday I'll finish that project of drawing 108 yoga teachers. It's the hair. Oh. Cool. I wonder. I have not watched Lost. I actually, for a long time, have not watched much. And just recently, it's been like Sandman and Other Rings of Power. Um, I used to watch a lot, but. Um, yeah, we're still pretty, pretty limited media consumption in our, our family. They watch Pokemon sometimes. But he's also very sensitive. Um, I'm not sure. Sometimes we've, tr we've tried to watch some 
some stuff which is supposed to be for kids and he, it's just like he can't watch it yeah but I was thinking it'd be cool to read The Hobbit with him yeah yeah The, um, the books. The book's not as scary as the movie. The, um, the movies, like the orcs and goblins and stuff, they had this, uh, a certain kind of horror film vibe, prosthetics and Oh yeah, Inktober. Inktober, Little Tober, October Hair, like Jay, Jane said. So that's um, uh, a friend, a friend of ours from the Drawing with Dylan Tuesday sessions, um, suggested doing October Hair, and drawing hair, making hair the mission. In um, in October. So Aaron Deer has some hair here. Quite quite dense, short hair. Haven't Octosterfest. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. High, high carbohydrate celebrations. <laughs> cool. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm kind of wondering. Where, where am I at at the moment? What what could I do? Like so some, because of the natural ink that I'm using, it doesn't have like the intensity, um, the contrast around the eyes and the hair. There's like certain, certain shapes where it's, oh wow, if I look up at the screen, the reference looks really different. I can see it in a different light, I can see much more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing any any drawings anyone's done. Um, if you're sharing it anywhere. Be sure to tag me. I'd like to see it too. Um, or you could send me a, a direct message if you if you're not sharing in public. Yeah. So anyone watching now who wasn't here earlier, um, Ismo Cruz Cordoba joined the chat. Came came and had a look before I started inking. That was that was pretty cool.
<laughs> I'm gonna dry this a bit and see what I can do with the pen just to get a bit more see if I can get a bit darker in some places so eyes are a bit too bright I guess went down and see the eyes are really they're not not in the highlights now it looks red I feel like just the, the eyes turned red as I fill that in. It'll probably brown out a bit when it dries, but that also made it look more angry. If, if anyone in the chat, anyone who's watching, my 10 friends, some of you may not know, um, who's watching The Rings of Power? Or who, who's, uh, um, yeah, that's the first question. Who's watching The Rings of Power? And um, who is a general, uh, has experience in Middle Earth? <laughs> I was at university when the Lord of the Rings films, I can't remember which one exactly it was, but I, I think I remember I had like a, a break between lectures and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go watch Lord of the Rings because <laughs> we're in the city, big city, I could just like go to the cinema and then go to another lecture. And um, I think it was the, the two, two Towers. I, I watched it a bunch of times at the cinema. This, I just noticed this area in the ears, like the highlight is way too bright. I'll have to wait till this dries a bit and, or maybe, let me just come in now. With this remaining kind of soft wash of what's, what's still on the brush. There are a few places where there's just like these glowing highlights in places where they shouldn't be. I first tried to read The Lord of the Rings in primary school, I think, because the book covers looked really cool. Got it from the school library, but I just couldn't couldn't get past all the different 
names it was just like overwhelming not only was it difficult enough for me to read as a child <laughs> there were all these words names and places i was just like i couldn't um couldn't keep it sorted in my little head so i didn't get very far with it and then i think it was when i was in later in high school that I, I read them. I read The Hobbit. I remember reading The Hobbit in English. And I had this really cool painting on the cover by Alan Lee of Smaug the dragon on a, a mountain of gold, I think. Was it was it that? Oh, it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't Alan Lee. Maybe I'm just making it up. But I just remember the picture that was on the cover. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to look it up, find what edition, who, who painted it. It's interesting thinking back on um, how Lord of the Rings got me into taking art seriously. And I was really into the idea of world creation and um, which kind of took me along the path of fant fantasy illustration for a while and learning, going to the illustration masterclass. And, um, but it's recently, it's all been pretty focused on portraiture, not so much fantasy. Oh, cool. Okay, um, Gadagabi, send me a, a message on Instagram. Um, but I probably I probably will get notified. There's like these three tiers of messages, um, and I'll I'll follow you, and then we'll be able to see see what you've done. Um, but I'll I'll probably get notified. But it'll be like in the um, message request section, and sometimes I don't see them for a while. Because usually it's people like there's a, there's a lot of like um, people interested in buying my work as NFTs or wanting to buy my work with Bitcoin or it's going to be my wife's birthday. I, I was wondering if I could buy some of your art and um, a lot of scams in my um, message requests on Instagram. I had someone recently who I was in conversation with who um, wanted to use a digital check and I to to buy some work and I looked it up and I was like there are all these like alarm bells the digital check scam because I guess somehow you provide some information and then they get access rather than getting money from them they get money from you somehow I don't know it's weird Don't know why these scams targeting artists. Be nice if there were less scams in general, I guess. But it's not like I don't know. I wouldn't assume that artists would be the target group for scamming lots of treasure from. <laughs> Cursed art. Um. <laughs> It's like, oh, you, you want to pay with Bitcoin or scam me? You don't even have to pay or just send you some of my work that I don't want anymore. <laughs> you can have that for free. Send me your address and details.
Kısa. Oh wow, almost been going for two hours. I'm feeling like this might be coming to a close. How are you going, Roseanne? You're also hanging in there. It's nice having you with us. Did you keep going on the on your drawing since the last time you showed us? Cool. Yeah, it looks nice with the um, the the shirt or the armor. That's that's cool. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And it's cool having the the ink in the background to give that contrast to the the light in the face. Yeah, yeah, it's intimidating to, to, to get into the face and um, especially working with ink. Yeah, talking to Roseanne in the in the Zoom chat over here. Um, Roseanne's done a drawing with calligraphy pen and then like, so um, with a similar pen to what I did this drawing with. And then if you, going too heavy handed into the um, shading in the face with an ink wash, it can be scary. This ink actually is not, I think this would bleed. There are two different inks in here. I use the one ink with a brush for the background and one ink for the, the hatching and the portrait. These are two very different <laughs> portraits. I feel like this could be something from a, I don't know, a fantasy book illustration. <laughs> it has like the sepia, sepia color, it gives it this kind of old world look. Um, this could be pretty fitting with the elves. I, at various stages, I've seen all sorts of inconsistencies with the reference and the, my, my drawing, but it's, it's all right. But it's fun just some, um, like all this layering, all the all the little brush strokes, just building up some of that value. It's such such a different approach to uh, to this one here. I'll just um, turn off the screenshot for a bit. Here are my two uh, Ismail portraits, Arandia. Two so far. Maybe I'll do some more. I might always have so many people that I want to draw, but it's been fun working on these and fun having you to join me Roseanne and Shannon and everyone else who's on YouTube if you're if you're still if you're still watching and haven't hit that thumbs up yet go for it cool yeah I'm glad you saw it too I did a little Instagram live and Roseanne saw that and then jumped in here got in the zoom chat as well so I'm hoping, so a, a year ago was the first YouTube live stream I did on my own channel. And now I have this vague idea that maybe I'll do a two week rhythm. So we did Gustavo two weeks ago. And then a month before that was my last live stream. So I want to do more, more live streaming. So please come and join me. And if you're, you're tuning in, then I'll probably have my Zoom room open as well. And, um, love having people to to chat with and it's nice i'm very appreciative of all the comments in the the youtube chat but it's also nice having some voices to interact with and um yeah that's something that we're doing more of so thank you everyone for joining especially my little zoom team but thank you for everyone on youtube and thank you everyone who's watching after the live um i'd love you to like and subscribe and leave a comment tell me uh, how you're liking the rings of power um, and 
If you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can buy me a coffee. Or if you'd like to learn from me in the description below, there's a bunch of opportunities to learn from me. I do monthly Patreon tutorial videos and I do requests in there. So if someone's like, how do you, how do you work with natural ink in this kind of context? Or how do you draw teeth is a video that I've done. Um, I think what, did I also focus on ears one time. Uh, my most recent lesson was drawing from a moving subject. So I just uploaded that a few days ago to Patreon. And that was really cool. I had my sister, uh, Claire Sara, on a video call and she was doing some work as I was drawing her. So that was really fun. And that was a re request from Jane. Um, so on my Patreon, I do uh, I respond to requests from my supporters, what they specifically would like me to address in the videos. So that's a really fun, interactive way to learn together. And um, I also have a couple of other classes. I have a natural ink class on the sketchy art school and a calligraphy pen portraiture class on the Cairo Bullock Art School. And I think I put all of those links in the description. So if you're interested, be sure to check them out. And um, otherwise, thank you so much for, for watching, for making it all the way to the end. I think this is the longest live stream I've done so far. Um, yeah, thanks so much for, for watching and joining. And um, thank you for your attention and sharing time together. And I'd love to see your work if you've been drawing along. So um, be sure to, to share with me if you're sharing on social media. You can use the hashtag drawing with Dylan and tag me. And uh, I'd love to see it. And I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and an excellent October. And come draw with me every Tuesday. <laughs> Cool. Thanks, Roseanne. Thanks, Shannon. Bye. Thanks, Ismael, for being an awesome muse. I'm not live anymore.